favourite, but then I'm a De Niro fanatic anyway, so... He makes rubbish films now, doesn't he, De Niro? Uh, he, he was a classic actor, and he just makes dreadful stuff. You know? and, and some of the films he does now, I think, come on, raise your game a bit. You know, People are going to forget Godfather 2. They're going to remain meet the fuckers, and that's all they're going to remember. Firm of figures knows your money cuts down on strife. Time to trust your future. Firm of figures love your life. The Firmer Figures Business Show is brought to you by Financial Gym Studios. Welcome to the only gym where someone else does the working out for you. Where you get impartial tips and strategies in plain English to help you understand your money, love your business, and trust your future. Introducing your host, author, speaker, and creator of Firmer Figures, the cantankerous coach, Georgette Roland Osborne. How are you? I'm all right, my <laughs> Oh, my God. Now, that's a mic. Wow. My, my wife says that. She, she, <laughs> sees, she sees the silhouette coming into the room at night and she says, that's a mic. I, I never understand what she's talking she about. No, no. And if if I were you, David, I would actually um, probably not ask too closely. Okay, dear. <laughs> do, you think, do, do you think so? Do you think I should just let it uh, yeah. sort of float, float as a mystery? <laughs> It's not a mystery, but I'm not telling you. <laughs> How are you anyway? It's, oh. it's good to finally speak to you face to face or, um, or Skype to Skype. Squared. Clo- close enough. Isn't it weird? And it's really funny because, you know, when you, you, you say to yourself, you know what? I have never met this person in, in real life. It's crazy because that yeah. it's always a godsend to find someone from the UK. And most of the UK sort of podcast crew I've met in some shape or form. And weirdly, I you're the, one of the first ones I've ever met. Yeah, I have never met a person, a podcaster in the flesh. I've never <laughs> put my hand out and poked somebody and they squealed and uh, I realised they were a podcaster. Never, never done it. Wow. No, no, I've not been bad at all. In fact, I'm in a mastermind which was made up of people that went to New Media Europe last year. Was it last year, this oh, okay. year? Last year, yeah. And it's still going, actually. You know, and a few dropouts, but no, it's been good. It's been good. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've never had the interest. I've, I've been invited to go over to Florida in, um, when is it, February, to oh, do yeah. some sort of presenting and stuff. And it's the first one I've finally gone, yeah, go on. And one of the reasons why, Georgia, is um, I, I used to be a trainer. I used to do it for a living, and I used to stand up doing public speaking. So when I started doing this, I kind of ran away from my previous life. It was like, no, I've done that. I don't want to do it anymore. And now, sort of two and a half years, three years down the line, I'm starting to think to myself, hang on, I've got skills that I'm not using anymore. I might as well sort of um, dust them off and get back to it. And uh, it's one of those things. So I'm going to start getting involved in it. But I don't really, between you and me, I don't really want to spend my time talking about podcasting. It doesn't interest me. Do, well, do you know what I mean? It, I'm so like... glad to hear that because with podcasting was going to be the backdrop. But I, was, I said to myself, we're not going to be talking podcasting today as a basis for what we will talk about, of course, because we cannot deny your success in it. So that would that, that would be a travesty to leave that on the cutting room floor. But yeah, obviously most people, as, as you know, are not podcasting and that's not what is lighting them up but you bring mm. so many other things to the table that have happened because you're podcasting and that's really what i wanted to sort of um home in on you know what i mean well you home in on whatever you want do you, well you do... well before we do that before we home in on anything not that the audience probably haven't worked out that you're a bit, bit of a, a character but number one oh yeah Oh my gosh, but my um, VA sent through, <laughs> we sent like a, an email, you know, when you pick your date and we send an email basically through mm-hmm. saying, this is what, well, you, it didn't apply to really, but we send it anyway, just to, you know, for conformity. This is what you need to do. Please have your mic like this, blah, 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 blah. And then your out of office comes back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, Dave, I'm so- with your permission, I have got to put that online. It's it's hilarious. I looked at it and I thought, now this is definitely in the vein of what I wanted to talk to him about today. Now I know there's a thing, such a thing as um, managing your time. Yes. But but that that takes it to a whole new level. And if people, if you want to know what we're talking about, you'll have to go to the show notes and have a look. It's class. So I'll move on from that one. But it's it's worth a look. And if you if you've got problems managing time and your inbox, you've got to use this strategy. It's um it's brilliant. 
Is it a bit anal, though? Is it a bit anal? What do you think? It's not a bit anal. It's very anal. But speaking to an, a very <laughs> anal human being, I appreciate it. And I wish I had the balls to have done it first. But I'm going to copy it. Not word for word, but total transparency. I've got no shame. I'm nicking that. That's brilliant. You I may not go two weeks, balls. though. Yeah, yeah. well, about that. We, we can share balls. You, you, you can have them, and I'll have them for the weekend. <laughs> you <laughs> You'd be very disappointed. Anyway, Dave few little trivia questions for you, and then we'll get into the meat of stuff and pick your brain. So, you're in a movie. They're doing a biop of you. You're not in the movie. They're doing a biopic of you. Who would you pick to play you? Angelina Jolie. Oh, my God. Really? Yeah, it's really? Be. Is she, is she pretty enough to play you? Really? No, you're, you're right, actually. I've got to go even higher than you couldn't, that. You can't do better than that. Well, all, I'm at that age now, but all the ones that I would have gone, the yeah, <laughs> sexy, very attractive, they the kind death. of got past their sell-by date. Do you oh, know what oh, I'm talking about? <laughs> well, when I was growing up, it was like Meg Ryan, Sharon Stone and all those kind of stuff. And now you kind of think to yourself, who's 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 up there money? Now, I'll tell you who I'd have. I'd have somebody. It used to be people used to spend all their time stopping me and saying, ah, y- y- you look just like Hugh Grant. So I think yeah. that although it used to annoy me, I think I would I'd go with that. I'd have Hugh Grant playing me. Actually, I could see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. Now they say your car says who you are, which is not true, because if that was true, I'd be in a chauffeur driven. Clearly not true. But what would you say you were? An executive saloon, sports car, or a four by four? No, a kind of escort van. Oh blimey. I, I, I like the, the A white one? Well, a white one, a blue one, I don't care. But I like the ability <laughs> to just kind of disappear. I like the ability to, you know, not be flash. And I like the ability to just open the back doors and carry things around. You know, I I suppose it's that desire to be manoeuvrable, not to be pinned down somewhere. We're getting very deep here. I wasn't expecting this. But, yeah, it's a kind of <laughs> belief. Uh, I don't want to get pinned down by any situation, by any conversation, by anyone's perception of me. And I think a kind of van is good for that. You can just lob all your stuff in the back and you can disappear. So there we go. I'm going to go with an escort van. Have you ever had that answer before? No. Uh, I have to say, and I I wish I could say (laughs) I needed to sort of go back into the archives of my mind, but I really don't. No, I've not had that one before. No. So, yes, you have taken the title of the most original answer to that question I have ever had. Well done. This one, you can save the male species this time. Your lady's upset with you. What do you do to turn things around? Never happens. Oh, you please. See, it, I live in Dig a Dig into the recesses I, of your imagination. I absolutely, I murdered my family yesterday. <laughs> Not physically, but I came home and I stole some food off of my daughter's plate. And she's 11 years old. And it was, it was pigs in blankets. And I don't know if all your audience knows this, but it's like little sausages wrapped up in bacon. And we, we have them a lot in the United Kingdom. And my wife was furious because I took it off the plate. And my daughter was furious because it was her favorite food. And she's only got 11 now instead of 12. So it was a big thing in her house. And um, I calmed them all down by just going into the downstairs toilet and sitting there for a while until it calmed down. You, you can't calm down, you can't please a woman, well you can please a woman but you can't sort of please a woman when she's upset, you've just got to let them get it out of their get system because I'll let you know into something, some females are a little bit unstable and um, in my household I've got a few of them that really do tip the unstable so I, I like the downstairs toilets Go and, there, and like you to, you right. don't think that there's that, that this sort of passes you by it has nothing to do with you ever it's just that they're unstable just just putting that out there yeah. I can feel a little bit of tetchiness coming from the no, host. No, no, I, no, 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 David. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just putting it out there that you know. And you know what? You used the two words that are. Oh my gosh! You see, we're getting deep now. The two words that are definitely, definitely guaranteed to get you to ugh, calm down. Any man who looks at a woman when she's in the throes and says, "Calm down," deserves everything he gets. Believe me. I haven't seen a woman in the throes for, for years. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the last thing That's I'm going to do she's is... That's why <laughs> Yeah, that, I'm not going to say, calm down, love. I really... <laughs> oh, it, it, this is my moment. <laughs> yeah, see, that's why she's got the ump in, in more ways than one. Anyway, moving oh. swiftly on. 
<laughs> I'm too focused on my mic. That's the problem. Yeah, but the mic, mic is not doing very well today. Dead or alive, what two people would you most love to meet? Uh, I'd like to meet... Oh, that's a very good one. I'd like to meet Jesus. That, that would be quite interesting because he, he was the kind of dynamo of his time, wasn't he? So I, Dynamo? I'd like to know, yeah, you know, he could do all these kind of magical tricks and stuff. And I always Dynamo. Wanted, yeah, can he can he do these tricks or is it just kind of a fabricated story yeah. that's all sort of built around it, you know? So Jesus would be a good one. And um, maybe Hitler. Have Hitler and Jesus at a dinner party. That would be an interesting that, one. Yeah, it would. It, it would. It probably wouldn't be a very long dinner party, but it would be interesting while it lasted. All right, last yeah. but not least, I'm giving you tomorrow off. What would you do with it? I, I work. I'm now at a point um, that when I'm not working, I'm working because my, my job is fun, you know, and I've never had that. I always used to have to go off to work. So when you come home, it was plonk yourself on in front of the TV, you know, rest at the weekend. But now if I'm not, I, I work. I like doing what I do. And so yeah. it's become a kind of hobby. So I don't look for having time off anymore because I don't see there's any point in it. I just do what I want to do. And sometimes I might, you know, have a day planned um, to work and then I think I can't be bothered. So I don't. So I'm very flexible with my time. Weekends, I don't even know if they're there. So it is just, you know, exist. Mm. What, what would I do? I will probably do what would make me happy at that time. Yep edit a podcast <laughs> and on that note then because i know one of the things that you're very hot on is basically how to pump out a lot of content with i suppose i could say very little time but we all have the same 24 hours a day but the thing that really kills people when they're trying to transition whether it's from a, you know a day job into doing what they want to do they dream of it and then they do it and they've never been so busy and then nothing is getting done and they're even further away from this dream. Now, you have managed to build a show. You're, what, over 600-odd episodes now, aren't you? And yeah, in, seven of us now. Seven, yeah, and it must be heading for 200-odd countries that you're, you're listened to or you're heard <laughs> in. So you don't do that easily. And the, the ultimate, your show is like every day. I mean, my God, <laughs> you know. Ow. It, it was every day it was but my my listeners and there's a little story here because you've got in podcasting land you've got to be aware of your listeners because without the listeners you haven't got a show yeah. and one i when i hit the first year anniversary 365 episodes i was doing an hour a day hour plus a day yeah, and i contacted all my listeners and i said right it's the second year of join up dots what do you want from it what do you want and they said less of it <laughs> <laughs> what? what what do you mean no, and no I didn't realize, yeah i didn't realize that they were like obsessively listening i thought they would just dip in every now and again yeah. but they weren't they were trying to keep up with sort of like nine hours of content a week and sometimes they were trying to listen to you know each show multiple times ridiculous amount of effort they were trying to put into it wow. so they actually forced me to go down three days a week so monday wednesday and friday but because i've got so many back episodes now i also go live with sort of a, a rewind as i call it weekend the, rewind, yeah. on on a sunday morning which is very good for downloads and it keeps the momentum up which is great in itunes land because they like you to keep on pumping it out as you say yeah and it's kind of funny because i'm a different kind of listener what i do is like i'll go for like your shows or whatever and i'll cherry pick my episodes and save them to listen yeah. later so that's never been an issue in terms of the frequency. So, you know, some people are like, well, I go every Friday morning at nine o'clock, the show goes live. doesn't affect me if I, I know who I listen to and I think, right, well, yep, yeah, that one, yep, yeah, I love that one. And then I binge listen in my own time when I'm ready. So if I miss a lot of episodes, it's not a big deal. I probably weren't going to listen to them anyway. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, so, exactly so, so then how did you, so obviously you were doing those episodes originally were you working at the time i know your history but the listeners don't were you working at the time what did your life look like then it, it, well i was a full-time podcaster earning no money basically <laughs> so i was a corporate guy i decided to take the leap and i was going to become a web developer and after three days of sitting at home with a cat i realized that i hated web developing it was one of those kind of things that i liked it when it was building a website for myself but actually when i started being asked to do it for other people i hated it mm. and the cat wasn't very 
very chatty. I was really bored at home on my own. And I was thinking, oh, my God, I might as well have been at work. I've made a mistake here. Because at least when you're at work, there's kind of companionship, isn't there? You yeah. can have a chat over coffee. You can sort of go over to somebody's desk. But I was just on my own. So I turned on a podcast. I thought, oh, I've heard of these things called podcasts. I might give them a go. And I listened to three back to back on this Wednesday afternoon. And by the third one, I thought, this is for me. I'm going to do this. And so I steamed straight into it. And I set the bar too high. I really did. And if anyone's out there thinking of doing a podcast, I would say go for it big time. But build up your speed. Don't go seven days a week, hour plus. And there was no questions. It was free flowing content. And so it, it literally killed me. But right at the very beginning, my first job was effectively three days web developer and then very poor podcaster. <laughs> and, uh, people were saying, what are you doing? Why, why are you doing this? And I was saying, because because you've got to build up the momentum. And I do believe that. I do believe that yeah. nobody is going to create something overnight. And all these overnight success stories don't happen. It's all like five or six, ten years or whatever. So I just start, started to plow into it. And now it's brilliant because a lot of the issues I had at the very beginning about finding guests and stuff, it's just like a tsunami. It just comes to me constantly. So I do the whole show now on one day. I only do it on Thursdays. And uh, the rest of the time, I don't even touch it. It's just all pre populated it's ready to go all recorded everyone's lined up to interview and that's it so it's become a bit of a dream now but at the beginning it was a bit of hell so do you do you post edit your shows or you have a team no or or, or you actually record it that makes it a minimal need yeah i don't do any editing mine is all live as we go so all the sound clips the intros the outros the mid rolls the Speech. I'm like a. I, I realised, and this was real. Thank God for this. I don't know how I came up with this idea, but I realised that at the very beginning, the best thing to do was to take away as much time afterwards that I was hearing people, and you'd you'd hear them, wouldn't you? And they go, "Oh, I spend three hours an episode taking every um and r ah out." And I used to think, "Well, don't do the ums and r's." Well, Just well, what, what's what's wrong with the ums and r's, Dave? We've all got to go for ums and r stage please we do but, but keep we the do. r's there and keep the ums <laughs> to a minimum and just focus in on yourself you know and just yeah. sort of go for it yeah. and so i just learned to sort of create my system so i press a button intro comes i just speak over it and at the end of it i literally my whole post-production is about 19 seconds per show that's my that's my record and i'm still trying to sort of speed that up oh wow well. so how do you go from poor podcaster to eating what was that story and what was that transition well it's a funny transition that because i went from no money to being six figures within about 15 days on the show and a guy came through to me a guy from kenya and he said to me um and david i'd like you to mentor me that was my kenyan accent it's close yeah it's good as i could do yeah close to arabia go on (laughs) <laughs> and um, he, he said to me, I'd, I'd like you to mentor me. And at the beginning, I, I was kind of like, I don't know anything about mentoring you. I'm, I'm, I'm just a podcast. I'm talking to successful people, but it doesn't mean I'm successful. And it was a kind of a big panic part to me. Mm-hmm. And uh, he said, no, no, name your price. I want you to mentor me. And so I said, 10 grand. I said, 10 grand, because I thought he's not going to pay 10 grand. And he went, fine. And I thought, oh, bloody hell, I should have said 20 grand. I should have sort of gone more. But anyhow, I said 10 grand. And uh, he said, fine. And we set up like this schedule. And within, well, he referred me to someone. So then that was 20 grand. And then it escalated really quickly in about 15 days. And I was on about 120 grand. And people were going, oh, this is amazing. You're so successful. You're so brilliant and i thought yes i am i am brilliant i i, I <laughs> i'm amazing the, yeah i've hit the, the utopia that everybody wants but then i realized about four four and a half months into it that i was waking up on a tuesday thinking right what do i need to do today oh god i'm talking to so and so from kenya <laughs> and it, 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 kind of became i created this job for myself talking to these people and i thought this isn't fun i did my leap of faith to have a life that's fun not to be trying to get somebody away from their box 
set so that they can, you know, make a life for themselves. But you know, as you were describing the escalation, I was sitting there thinking, but you've you've actually got a service this now, babe. <laughs> well, yeah, absolutely, yeah. And I, I kind of become a, a, a life coachy kind of person. And so I made the second leap of faith, and this was more scary because this was absolutely no answers, but I decided to get rid of every single one of them. And my wife kept on saying to me, just keep free, just keep free, you know. <laughs> like you do. And I, yeah, and I said, well, I had the sexy one, and I, it was like picking for your school football team. I, I lined them up against the wall and just chose the ones I wanted. And um, I know I, I said, no, I've got to do this. I've got to just get rid of all of them because I need to be focused on the path I want to be on. I want to have the life I, I want to be on. So so that's what I did. So I got rid of all of them and I just started moving on with creating my profile, building up my audience and doing the stuff that I love. And it's worked really well. You know, was it lucky? Was it bloody mindedness? I don't know. But certainly when I said no, I now know what I want to be. It's not about the money. It's about the thing and then things started to sort of take off for me and i was just on the, in the wrong direction really i was i was very much show me the money you know mm-hmm. and it was the wrong money and i say this to people all the time it was the wrong money and they go well there's no such thing as wrong money yes there is oh if gosh yes there every is morning yeah we're with stomach ulcers because you've got to go and do a job that you hate doing even though they're paying you a lot of money it's just not worth it mm. So then <laughs> you've cherry picked you, you've cherry picked your customers. You've gone back to possibly holding the cat for another few days. How did you then start building your profile and how long did that take you before you started to see some traction? Not long, to be honest. It was more a mental traction with me. When I started off, I, I wanted to do a show that was very motivational very inspirational but has nuggets of gold as well but funny I, 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 that's what i wanted to do i wanted to do something that was like the perfect commuter show that people would listen to enjoy and it was an equal balance of entertainment plus content and as a financial trainer i did that for years and i would stand up doing incredibly boring subjects but make them into game shows and fun things and so people would come out now that was the hard thing that was hard now i would say 90% of the shows hit what I want, that they are amusing, we have laughs, we have a bit of silliness, but we get some deep content, you know, it really is a sort of smorgasbord of what I wanted. And it wasn't the audience waiting for me to deliver that, that was me waiting for myself. It was a kind of confidence thing that I could actually do it and keep on doing it and what i found is easy now is because the guests actually listen to the show they know what to expect and so they come on with that kind of vibe already and makes it so much easier than at the beginning and i was saying to them you know well what we're going to do we're going to do a bit of this and we're going to do a bit of that and you could hear them going this isn't what i get on entrepreneur on fire this <laughs> is like you know I'm, I'm not used to this kind of thing and so it, it, <laughs> It, it was a bit difficult to sort of get the mindset across to them. But, it, yeah, it's so much easier now. And I can literally say anything I want. I, I did a show the other day and I listened back to it and I kind of forgot that I was talking about this. Talking about doing, um, stripping myself naked and dancing river dance style in the kitchen. Oh, and, Lord. Um, you know, I, I, I've now got that ability and that flexibility to just say what I want and it's it's lovely it's so liberating and fortunately no one listens to it so I can get away with so it. you can get away with it in fact I was a guest on someone's show a few weeks ago and she swears throughout the entire thing it's the f word continually I, I don't think there's ever a reason to... We, we've got, I don't know, a, a hundred words. So I don't think we ever have to use one for no. slow words. Well, it's know? the other way I, around. It's a word. And she warns you. And I must admit, it was really weird because the, I, I watched this experiment the other night. It was about the Manson family because I really need to get out more. Yeah. And it was about how do we... Why is it that even though the evidence shows us exactly what someone is like or a group is like, eventually, despite our best intentions, we can form and follow it. And yeah. you do it. And they showed these experiments. It was fascinating because I'm fascinated by things like that. And it, I remembered back to doing that interview. And it was a great interview, actually, if I say so myself. And sometimes I wonder whether she was trying to see if I would. <laughs> but, but I didn't. She was, she, she was trying to groom you into yeah, yeah. her swearing. You know what? 
do you know what? I used that word the other day on somebody. So they said to me, oh, they're really asking me about, oh, yeah, that they got married and literally been together for like five years, get married within a few weeks of getting married, not together anymore. So what, what was wrong? He had the cheek to say to me, you're my wife now. I said, well, did you not see this before you got married? Well, no, he was the perfect man when he was grooming you. Grooming you, darling. Now he's got you. And she, she, I don't think they've lived in the same house. They've got married in June. But anyway, I digress. You were saying... No, you don't digress. No, hang on, because I, I, I can beat this. I actually know somebody who actually got divorced on honeymoon. Oh, now, shut brilliant. up. Now, Go if this away. person's listening, then you, you, you're going to know it's about you because there's some bizarre action here. But <laughs> he, he got married to a lady that we met, and she was kind of pleasant but a bit distant. Anyhow... They went to Cyprus and she said, I've got a bad tummy. And so he went, oh, okay, I'll stay around. And she said, no, go off, you know, get some sunshine, do this, do that. So he went off and he sort of had a day walking around the pool like you do. And he came back and she was still in bed and that. And it went on for about four or five days. And it turned out that every time that he was going off for a walk, she actually booked her lover into another hotel, <laughs> just down another room. And she was seeing this other guy whilst on honeymoon with this we will call him Derek to save his blushes now, now the weird thing about this that is pretty bad but Derek found out on the honeymoon was really annoyed by it went storming down the beach and there was a big bunch of pelicans and he went running into the pelicans like you would seagulls expecting them to all fly up into the air and they didn't they beat him up so badly <laughs> he ended up in the with a broken arm and that weird <laughs> well, I suppose that's a wedding to remember, really. Isn't it? <laughs> it, it, it barely got past a wedding. <laughs> you just can't make this stuff. Well, actually, no, you probably couldn't make this stuff up. They say the fact is stranger than fiction. Oh, yes. my yeah, that gosh. That was worth digressing to. Wasn't yeah, it? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I figured we'd be a, a bit of digressing going on. Yes. So now we've got past the pelicans, you said. Right. Okay. Pelicans. Fine. Yeah. Yes. So for people who are doing making that journey who don't want to spend three days playing with a cat and their wife giving them the look what three things so i'm gonna i'm gonna go into um e on fire mode now what three things would you suggest that they do to get some fire under their freedom journey for want of a better word better Two words. Right. Are, are we talking about podcasting or just the leap? I think just the leap because podcasting is very specific to our world. And a lot of the people out there, I, I think the journey is the same. But people, when you talk about podcasting, don't often see the, the connection. <laughs> don't often join the dots, Dave. <laughs> yeah, I like what you did there. Oh, that, that's, that's, oh, I know, I know, lovely. <laughs> you are a professional. You're a legend. <laughs> and I, I bow down in front of you. Right, okay, these are the three things that they should do. Before they even plan to do the leap, they should spend night after night on the on the computer, on the PC, looking around and jotting down all the things that they love in their life, all the things that they like and the things that they hate to sort of get a, a sort of a template of what they like. And then once they've done that, start looking around the internet because there is some weirdness out there. There are people making a living in the most bizarre ways that you can't comprehend because I think most of us, we are kind of programmed by that environment. So, oh, we work in an insurance company, so when we go to quit, we just think oh we go to another office it's all we ever know but there's a different life out there so i would spend you know probably three four months just looking around the internet looking at things and thinking that looks fun and just jot down your fun barometer your, your sort of scale and then once you've done that the second thing i would start connecting with groups surround yourself with like-minded people that also like doing and are doing that thing because that's the big mistake I did. I leapt and I didn't have anyone to surround myself with. It, and it was difficult just pushing yourself through by force of will. And so I'm a great believer now, as I say, you are the average of the five people, blah, blah, blah. But it's true. So mm -hmm. try and find your tribe and sort of just form that. And then think about how long you want to take to do something and then double it. Because if you say that you're going to do it in six months, it's going to take a year because there's such an upskill. And one of the 
what's kind of disappointing things about upskilling is you look back and you think, oh, I could have done it so much quicker. But you only think that because you're now skilled. Yeah. And when you're plowing through and everything's taking four times as long to do it. You know, I couldn't, I, I can't even remember how long my first podcast took to edit, but it was probably 20 minutes or so when I first started. And then you get down to 19 seconds and it just sort of breathes. So they, they, they would be the three things I would say. First of all, be really aware of what you want and really, you know, be creative with your decision making and then surround yourself with the people and then set a goal, but double it because it's never going to be as quick as you want. For real. So, so how do people work with you now? What does your business look like? My business is all scalable. So I pretty much sit at home in my lucky underpants and um, I, I, I don't do any one to one. I have a podcasting mastery, a training platform that people buy into, and I do that. I'm quite active in there. So we have, um, well, we have two things. We have a community, Dream Starters Academy, where I teach people how to get going at the beginning. And we've been very lucky with the people that have connected with us, uh, connected with us on that. So that's a monthly membership, and then that spins off into Podcasters Mastery, which we're having a big revamp now. And uh, literally, I have. Thursdays is Join Up Dots Day that I record all my shows. And then on Thursday, uh, Friday, I get up and record episodes of Dream Starters Academy podcast, which is my members only podcast. And then I allow the world to rip me to pieces. And I'm very open on Facebook. We do Facebook live sessions. We do coaching, but it's all group. I don't do it any one to one anymore. OK. Oh, no. Do you recruit on Facebook or you find them through other means? They just come to me. That, that, that's that's a brilliant thing. Oh, what cool. I realised early in the day, there's this little thing called Vokaroo, which is amazing. If you haven't used Vokaroo, it's the, it's the biggest sales technique I've ever had because people will write to me very long-winded, heartfelt emails about stuff. So I go on to Vokaroo, which is a online recording, and I speak into my microphone and I speak to them directly and I send a voice message out to them. So they're not just getting an email from a PA or whatever. They get the person they've been listening to. And it's a real brilliant way to start Mm. building that connection because once you start building that connection, they feel like they can talk to you. And once they talk to you, 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 it's going to sound, you know, it's going to sound wrong some way, but the way, you know, we're all in business to convert people into sales. You know, we're all in sales. Mm -hmm. Uh, You can do it in the right way or the wrong way. And I believe that the right way is ultimately get them to trust you, get them to believe in you, provide oodles and oodles and oodles of free value, and then bring them into your world. And once you bring them into your world, you can really work with them. But um, I've been very lucky with the people that I've connected with, and I've got a really good team. And um, although the whole show is just me, I do it and I... Um, schedule everything that's myself I don't have anyone involved the people that I've surrounded myself with they are the, the, they're, they're the wind beneath my wings yep, I think. Totally. Who, who was that? Boy Zone or someone was it Bette Midler Bette Midler of course yeah. it was oh. see it went with look, yeah. just about just about the, the age group of the women you were talking about was she one of your um your crushes Oh, well, yeah, she probably, I like any woman that I can just put <laughs> plastic, plastic down under the seats. You know, I <laughs> like woman. I like them at that age when there's a little bit of leakage every now and again, you know, when they get, a, that, that's what I like. That's what I like. No, I, I'm, it's not something that I'm actually aware of. And I've had two children. So you've lost me there, Dave. You've lost me there. <laughs> Keep away from trampolines. Don't, don't go on trampolines. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't anyway. I don't do look I'm black we don't do jumping and we don't go in water we get our hair wet what's wrong with you no you do all the best basketball players are black that's they're because, all jumping that's because they're mutant black people I mean normal ones like us short ones what's wrong with you oh for crying out loud I must admit I haven't seen very many short black basketball players <laughs> there you go exactly yeah. they're mutants they're not the no, they're not the same as the rest of us if only, if only. Can you imagine how rich we would be now if I had that high? And a girl. But no, actually, what you were saying about Vokaroo, it's very true because my customers still, a lot of them are corporate, business to business. And they send you those long emails and I send them back because I'm just too damn lazy to type it all out. So I just sit and talk and send it back and it throws them. And they're like, what? I mean, you know, bearing in mind we do podcasts and we're online and you do media stuff. These people, Skype is something that their kids play with or they still think their kids play with. And they're like, whoa, 
that's brilliant. And we spend the next meeting for the first 10 minutes of them being so amazed that they got a voice message. It's just unreal. But it works. It's very easy to wow people, isn't it? That's it really thing. is. It, re- yeah. it really is. So, I, yeah, I started doing that the last couple of years. But it didn't start because I thought I was being clever. I, it was one customer. And what it was was I wanted her to hear the tone in my voice because it was something about her finances. And I wanted, to, I wanted to sort of press home a point that I knew I could only do vocally. It wouldn't tetchy have come across right. Voice. Was it tetchy woman voice? No, it wasn't tetchy. It was conciliary now. If you go down this route, you know what could happen. That voice, it was that voice. I needed that one. You know, like, yes, mum. I, th- I thought that was quite sexy the way you did that, actually. Well, actually, that- yeah, I, I have been known, but let's not go, you know. I'm in demand for that one, but that's a whole different show. Um, so I, I phoned those numbers. I now <laughs> know I recognise your voice from. Shh, shh. Yeah, yeah. It's a whole different show, dear. It's, if you wanted to know how I made money so quickly, there you go. <laughs> Vocaroo and the voice. But yes, no, that, that's my that's my customer voice. I can do Tetchy, but no, if you do if you do that voice, they you, they, they think, oh, she's on my side and she understands, which of course I am. But I I, I measured myself on I, I modeled myself, I should say, on um Robert Duval in The Godfather. I thought you were going to say Robert Downey Jr. when you started that. Well, that that was the previous life, but no, it's Robert Duvall this time. You know that the conciliary, you know that calm reason, that voice amongst the madness. That's me. I've never seen any of the Godfathers. I'll be honest. Oh, get out of it! What do you mean? And I'm too busy living my life. Last last weekend, I sat there and watched Back to the Future one, two, and three. And I'm going through a get my daughter up to speed with classic movies, you know. And so we've done all the Star Wars and the Goonies and the Indiana Jones and oh, stuff. Okay. And oh, I don't think we're, we're ever going to get to the point when the Godfathers are top of the list. They're never going to beat the Rockies, are they? Well, do, you know, uh, do you know what? I think Rocky was because it was such a prolific movie. You couldn't avoid it. The Godfather, it was just one of those ones that it came on the telly and you happened to be sitting in front of it. But I was like, not so much even number one. It's the, the second one with De Niro, which, of course, you haven't seen. But that that's my favourite. But then I'm a De Niro fanatic anyway, so that I'm probably biased. But no, I I love the Godfather series of movies. Totally. I, but I'm not sure I would have gone to see them. He makes rubbish films now, doesn't he, De Niro? Uh, he, he was a classic actor and he just I know. makes... He doesn't doesn't need to try anymore. He just phones her, phone was it phones it phones it in now, as they say. Doesn't have to bother. Bob- yeah, I know you don't have to be bothered, but there is a p- professional. Profes- yes, yes, yeah. You know, and and some of the films he does now, I think, come on, raise your game a bit. You know, people are going to forget Godfather Two. They're going to remember meet the fuckers, and that's all <laughs> they're going to remember. You're going to tell him that. <laughs> Are you going to be the one to tell him? <laughs> yeah, when he's on my show. Yeah. Oi, right, Bob, sort it out. <laughs> oh. Well, on, on that note, now that we've ripped poor Mr. De Niro to shreds, David, Ralph, it has been a pleasure. <laughs> Is it over so quick? Yeah, that's what happens when you're having fun. That's what I happens. To the wife, and the wife always says to me, Is it over that quick? And I always say to her, That's what happens when you're having fun, but she doesn't believe me. She don't, you... no, no. No, no, no. Um, I think you're, mix, you're, you're mixing your experiences here. <laughs> I see. I, I can. Well, I can't personally say experience. where she's coming One from. One is a fantasy. That's yeah, a yes, One yes. Is a fantasy. Yes, I think you've summed it up nicely. Wonderful summary. Yes, exactly. That's exactly what it is. But yes, <laughs> indeed. Yes, indeed. No, it's been an absolute pleasure. And like I said, you know what? I don't know what came over me because from you're probably one of my first podcast friends in the world when it was even that sort of a glimmer in my brain. And I suddenly said that like last week when we were um, messaging, and I thought, why on earth haven't I had David on the show yet? He's mad. Like you say, you're running around like a headless chicken and you don't think, you know. Yeah, it is weird because I, I've been thinking that because I remember talking to you before I was even a podcaster. And I thought, how the hell did I connect with you? I, I can't quite grasp it. But yeah, you have been in my, my world right from the very beginning. This is the first time and I, ever... Well, this is where serendipity, you know what it is? You said you listened to a podcast and you thought, oh, I could do that. I like that. I did exactly the same thing. I was coming home one day from a client because obviously I'd be working for myself for so long and they were just getting on my nerves. And I was sitting on the <laughs> tube and I da- downloaded an episode of the Solopreneur Hour. And it was the early yeah. days of my yeah. colonial show. 
And I just wasn't even so much the show. It was just he was just bantering with um, I think it was Dawn Mars at the time. And all it was was I just wanted to communicate with him because he just summed up my day in that in that particular show. It's like he was speaking to me. And I remember he had that well he still has it, the um the solopreneur hour, the, the the group. And it was only a few of us there. And I think it was about three of us from the UK, me, you and another guy who I met up with and you know we went for a drink and stuff and we still sort of keep in touch and that's really how it was and Michael said oh you know typical of someone from abroad are you near each other <laughs> not really well actually we're not that far but it was like that's kind of how it began and then you were talking about you got your studio you're building at the bottom of the shed and I'm thinking I barely bought a microphone and he's got a whole studio in the making <laughs> well, because so- it's interesting yeah now you say Ooh. that because episode eight I think of the solo hour was the first time ever I was on on a podcast when I sent him a little message and he played it and I used to play that every single day it was about a minute and a half and there was so much confidence and I've always said to Michael you know when I was on his show you know thank you so much because that one bit of positive feedback really gave me the rocket power and that's a kind mm-hmm. of message out to all your listeners where you don't need tons of adulation you just need personal belief and one person to believe in you yeah well, my, well Michael was for me that's that's how I published my book I got on a half an hour phone call with him and he just said forget all of that stuff get the book out and don't just get the book out no I had the book out at the time and he said have you ever considered doing audible doing the audio version and I was like oh. But because I was scared about doing a podcast, he yeah. said, well, you don't need all the equipment because Michael is pro when it comes to doing a podcast. It's, you know, pucker. This is it's just so. And he said, you don't have to go down that route. You can just get a good microphone and just get your mic technique sorted out. And that's what I did. And it's from doing that audio book that I finally made the leap into actually doing the podcast. And every few months when those ro- that royalty payments come through, I kiss that man in, in my mind every time. Because I never would have done it. I never would have done it. Just I, one person. I, I haven't read your book, but I'm going to now. I'm going to lay in bed with you every night and read the book. No, it's holy. It's really not necessary, Dave. It's really not necessary at all. Trust me, it's all right. <laughs> it's, and I don't think Just, you need my book. It's for people who got financial problems. I, I think you're all right. <laughs> I thought it was mental problems. Yeah, no, the next one. The next one's going to be that. <laughs> Just watch this space. <laughs> that's coming up. Money shame is good. No, that's, that's going to be the book after the next one. Talking about money shame and mental problems. There you go. See. You're, you're actually psychic. Hmm? Yeah, you've, you've covered everything. Every angle you bring out. And that, that's the thing, isn't it? Once you get a certain belief in yourself, then products just come to the fore. And oh, there's so many. It does oh. become quite easy in many yeah, ways. Yes, so many, so many, so many. So what's your next step and what you're going to be up to in the next year or so? Uh, next step, um, we're going to really push Podcasters Mastery because it is kind of very nice. It's lucrative, but I, I want more from that. And then we are going to be developing more on probably joinup.tv, going to be developing a sort of online TV show. That's something that's in the forefront of my mind. But everything, it, it ties back to that email that you were talking about, you know, my out of hours. Everything's got to be under my control. I don't yeah. want anything where I'm being pulled here because i've got to be somewhere at eight o'clock I, you know that i've been there i've done that yeah so totally. I've got loads of things planned but it's all very much when it's right for me when i want to do it and uh and i'm, I'm gonna have a happy life until i'm old and gray good for you david ralph it's been emotional thank you it's been more than that it's been sexual as well <laughs> yeah i have not about you <laughs> <laughs> And what about you? Are you facing any issues in your business? Any financial or productivity issues? You are more than welcome to contact me and see if we can get you sorted out. Email me at feedback at firmafigures.com. For the links to any of the resources I've mentioned, go over to financialgymforbusiness.com forward slash podcast, where you'll find them in the show notes. If this was useful to you, please would you consider going over to iTunes if you're an Apple user or Stitcher if you're an Android user and give me a rate and review. I love bringing information to you and would really love to know if this is helping. Every five-star rating that I get not only tells me that I'm not just talking to myself, it also tells iTunes and Stitcher 
That way, when people are searching for a show like mine, I'll show up. Full step-by-step -step instructions on how to do this can be found at my site, financialgymforbusiness.com slash podcast. And if you have a website, blog, podcast or business that you want mentioned, leave the details and I'll give you a shout out. And if you don't want to have to remember when I'm on next, just click the subscribe button on whatever platform you're listening in on so that you get notified. In fact, if you haven't done it already, why not do it now? Thank you so much for being here. Bye bye. Firm of figures, love your life.